Hey everybody, Mr. J here, and today we are going to be talking about two relatively complex effects that you've probably heard of before in your anatomy class, and they're called the Bohr and the Haldane effects. And a lot of the times you learn about these things, you memorize it, and then you forget it. But today we're going to go through the process of why these effects are so important in the respiratory system. So what I want you to remember, first off, is the goal of these effects is to maximize oxygen drop-off at the tissues and to maximize the carbon dioxide pickup at the tissues, okay? So basically what's happening here is, I've got these respiring cells, so the cells that are using oxygen and glucose making energy, and then I've got the capillary. So this is gonna be the capillary, here's gonna be my red blood cell, and we're gonna see how these effects come into play to help deliver oxygen to these respiring cells and to take the carbon dioxide away from them, put them back into the bloodstream to eventually go to the lungs to be exhaled, okay? So let's get started. So first off, I mentioned a couple things. These cells over here, any cell in your body needs energy. The way it makes energy is it combines glucose and oxygen, okay? Does some chemical reactions and creates a couple things, water, CO2, and ATP. Now, the goal of this process of cell respiration is to produce this ATP. But we also make this byproduct, carbon dioxide, that can be dangerous in high numbers, okay? So this carbon dioxide must get into the bloodstream and then get back to the lungs eventually to be breathed out, okay? So we want to bring this carbon dioxide into the bloodstream. At the same time, oxygen is going to be used up by the cells. Okay, so in the cells, there's going to be very low amounts of oxygen, but they need more constantly. So where does it get it? It comes from the red blood cells themselves. When this red blood cell was in your lungs when you were breathing in, these hemoglobin molecules, which are just proteins on the red blood cell, will be just caked with oxygen molecules. I believe it's about four oxygen molecules per hemoglobin. And you've got just thousands and thousands of hemoglobin proteins packed into this red blood cell, holding onto that oxygen, ready to give it to these tissues, okay? So once again, the goal is to get carbon dioxide picked up by the bloodstream and to deliver that oxygen to the tissues. This is going to uh, come into effect when we're talking about the Bohr and Haldane effect. So watch this. First off, we've got low oxygen in the cells, and we've also got a lot of carbon dioxide in the cells, in these uh, tissue cells. In the bloodstream, both in the blood cell and the plasma, so the fluid surrounding the blood cells, we're going to have high amounts of oxygen, and we're going to have low amounts of carbon dioxide when we are delivering oxygen to the tissue. So as you see already, we've got this gradient. We play with gradients a lot in anatomy and physiology, and we remember that high concentrations like to go to low concentrations, and subsequent, okay? So the carbon dioxide is going to be diffused down its concentration gradient into the blood plasma. And we're gonna stick with carbon dioxide here for a second. This carbon dioxide is going to go into this red blood cell. So the CO2 is in the red blood cell, and it's going to combine with a very common molecule, water. When this happens, there's going to be an enzyme in your red blood cell called carbonic anhydrase. Okay, this is just an enzyme that's dealing with water and a carbon molecule. So ACE means enzyme is carbonic anhydrase. It's going to combine these two molecules together. Now you ask, why is this happening? You're just jumping into a chemical reaction already. Well, think about it. CO2, we remember this as a gas, right? Carbon dioxide is a gas. Your cells are producing gas. Well, guess what? If you put a bunch of gas into your bloodstream, your blood is going to be like LaCroix or any sparkling drink that you enjoy. And there's going to be gas bubbles of carbon dioxide filling your bloodstream. So watch this. Instead of allowing this carbon dioxide to just fill your bloodstream and make it all bubbly, instead we're going to combine it with water to make a molecule called carbonic acid, H2CO3. I said this is carbonic acid, right? And if you know anything about acids, Acids like to dissociate. What that means is they like to dissolve into two different things. One thing they're going to dissolve into is hydrogen ions. Okay, so hydrogen ions, when this carbonic acid splits apart, it's going to form hydrogen ions, and this is going to make the blood quite acidic. That's going to be important here in a second. It'll also dissociate into bicarbonate, HCO3 
minus, okay? So why did we do this? I said because we're taking a gas and we're converting it into ions. And if you remember anything from my previous videos, ions like to dissolve in fluid. So we are in fluid, blood, so we are converting a gas carbon dioxide into ions so that they can flow in the bloodstream well. That's the goal, right? Now, we have a problem. We have acidic atoms. Those hydrogen ions make the blood acidic. And remember, your blood pH, your acidity, must remain around 7.4. Okay, so if we just grab a bunch of carbon dioxide and produce a bunch of hydrogen ions, guess what? This pH will drop to say like seven, and that's super dangerous. So we can't do that. So we've got to do something with these hydrogen ions. And what they do is they actually like to come and bind to the hemoglobin. So they're going to come get scrubbed up by the hemoglobin. And at this point, this is where the Bohr effect comes in. When hydrogen ions like to attach to hemoglobin to basically scrub up the hydrogen ions to not make it too acidic, what it will do is it will kick off the oxygen. So now the oxygen unbinds to the hemoglobin because of those hydrogen ions. Thus, a lot of this oxygen is going to get kicked out of the hemoglobin. And what does that mean? Well, now that it's unbound to this hemoglobin protein, it can now travel freely. What do I mean by travel freely? Well, we're in high concentrations of oxygen here. And remember, we have low concentrations of oxygen in the tissue cells. So if it's free from that hemoglobin now, all of this oxygen is free to diffuse down its concentration gradient into the cells. So what just happened? Hydrogen ions are being produced from the carbon dioxide, right? Those hydrogen ions kicked out. Think of this as like an ex-boyfriend or something. You're kicking out the ex-boyfriend. Now the hydrogen ions, the boyfriend of the hemoglobin, right? So now, since we had a lot of that acid, it kicked off the oxygen. So this is the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect states that the more acidic the solution, the more oxygen will disassociate with the hemoglobin protein. So the more acidic the more O2 disassociates with hemoglobin. And hemoglobin, I just shorten up as HB. So that's the hemoglobin protein. Since the hydrogen kicked off the oxygen, now the oxygen free flows into the tissue cells. So now we fed our cells oxygen. That's wonderful. There's another thing here that happens. I'm going to point out two just to make sure that it's aligned with what you're in your textbooks and your other classes. One thing that happens that I didn't mention, this bicarbonate is actually going to get pumped, not pumped, out of the red blood cell and get into the plasma. When this happens, ions, chlorine ions, will actually come into the red blood cell. And this is called the chloride shift. This chloride shift exists just to keep the neutrality of the red blood cell. So what I mean by that is the cell likes to remain pretty negative, negatively charged, okay? So if we're losing a negative, this cell is gonna become more positive. That's dangerous for the cell. It could blow up and do other bad things. So instead of losing a lot of negative, we just bring in a negative instead with chlorine. So that's called the chloride shift. You might get tested on that in a different class. But what I wanna focus on is the Haldane effect. So we talked about the Bohr effect. The more acidic, the more oxygen's getting kicked off, which feeds the tissues. This carbon dioxide can also come and directly bind to hemoglobin. So instead of oxygen binding to it, instead we're going to actually make it carbon dioxide now binding to the hemoglobin. And the Haldane effect is rather simple. It says whenever carbon dioxide binds to the hemoglobin, it does the same thing as the hydrogen ions. It kicks off the oxygen. So the Haldane effect states that the more CO2 binds to hemoglobin, the more O2, oxygen, is kicked off. So since we've already kicked off some of that oxygen with the uh, hydrogen ions, now the carbon dioxide is free to be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to own the party now. Why is this important? Well, 
couple reasons. Number one, it amplifies how much oxygen is getting kicked off and sent into the tissues. The second thing is all the carbon dioxide that's being produced by these tissue cells is getting just swept up by blood cells immediately through this process. So we can either go through the route of changing carbon dioxide to its ion, so bicarbonate. This is bicarbonate. I don't think I wrote that. And a hydrogen ion, which can get scrubbed, shifted out, or we can also just bind carbon dioxide directly to the hemoglobin. Both of those kick off oxygen. So we're picking up a bunch of carbon dioxide at the tissues. We're delivering a bunch of oxygen at the tissues as well. Those are the Haldane and the Bohr effects. Now, before I log out for the day, this blood cell will go to the lungs where this whole process will flip. So if you were to just take all of these arrows that I drew, flip them, that is what occurs at the alveoli in the lungs. So I'm going to make another video on what happens in the alveoli to amplify picking up oxygen and actually expelling carbon dioxide. But for today, this was the Haldane and the Bohr effects. Hopefully this is helpful. Please comment with any questions below and have a wonderful day.